Hi, I'm Josh Oliver from Zenata Consulting. Welcome back to my Zoho Creator tutorials. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my favorite method of coding in Zoho Creator, and that's using standalone functions. Standalone functions allow you to easily create blocks of code that can be decoupled from other functions, and it can be deployed in multiple places. And whenever you need to make a change, you simply make a change to that one standalone function, and then everywhere else where you're referring that function, those functions will be updated as well, and you won't need to make those changes across all those different workflow rules. And standalone functions can be used to manipulate data, trigger API requests, and they can also be used for advanced filtering in lookup fields and reports. By the end of this video, you will have a more advanced understanding of how to code in Zoho Creator using standalone functions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. Enjoy. Hopping into Zoho Creator here, we're gonna be working in that same application I've been uh, creating these tutorials on. And so this is our task management application. This app is pretty simple. Uh, we just have accounts and tasks, and tasks are linked to accounts. In a previous video, I walked you through how to create a function inside of Creator where you will essentially sync this information with the CRM. And so you can see all of these accounts are coming in. These are actually from the CRM, but we've set that up as a two-way sync. So anytime an update happens in the CRM, it pushes to Creator. And anytime it updates in Creator, it pushes to the CRM. When I created that function, I created it as a just a standard workflow rule. Now, what I'm realizing is, hey, I need to trigger that workflow rule from other places. Uh, not only on submit of a an account, I also maybe want to trigger it on a button. Maybe I right click an account and it triggers the function or I could mass trigger the function by selecting all. Uh, so really what we need to do is we need to move that function into a standalone function or move that code into a standalone function. And then we can then deploy the standalone function within the workflow role. So now I can add that standalone function to a workflow role. I can add it to a button. I can add it to a, stand, uh, a scheduled function, or maybe I could add it to another function down the road to trigger that same bit of code. So I'm gonna hop into our editor, and when I go into the editor, we'll see we have one form workflow set up on the accounts module. And if I go in here, we can see on submit of the record, when it's either created or edited, we have this block of code that's running. And simply, it's just a map of data. If the CRM account is not it is null, then we need to create the account record. And so we're simply just creating an account in the CRM. Otherwise, we're going to update the record. And CRM account is simply just an integration lookup field to the CRM accounts module. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna simply copy this code. I'm gonna copy the code and we're going to functions and I'm gonna create a new function. And I'm gonna call this CRM account sync. Call it whatever you want. Uh, whenever you create the function, you can give it a specific language. So we're gonna be coding in Deluge today, but you could use Node.js or Java. Select your namespace. I generally just, right now, we're just gonna use the default namespace, but if you had a big app and you wanted to group bits of code within uh, different folders, essentially, uh, you could create various namespaces. Uh, we'll just use default for now since we only have uh, one or two functions in here. Um, but down the road, you could uh, move these functions into different folders or different namespaces. Next, we're going to set the return type. So what do we want the function to return? In this case, I don't care too much about a return because it's just pushing data to CRM. I'm not actually trying to grab information back. So generally, if I'm just pushing data, I can just do a void, but maybe I wanna receive a confirmation message and output that as my uh, return message. So it could be void, uh, you could do string or map. Uh, so we'll stick with void for now, but I'll show you in the, uh, in the next bit how we can change that. And then we're gonna specify arguments. And now an argument is a variable that you're pushing into this function that you can then run the function off of. So an input argument in this case would be account ID. And this is the creator account ID. And I'll show you 
uh, what we'll use this in a second for. The ID is an integer field, uh, but you could also put it, push other uh, arguments or variables. Uh, those variables could be string, boolean, time, date. Uh, you could push a map in here, a list, list string, list int, and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and create this function. And then I'm simply just going to paste my code here. Now that's not all we need to do. We need to, we need to do a few other things. So with this account ID, we need to grab the account record because these input commands, these will not work inside of a standalone function be, unless I added them all as variables in the input parameters. In that case, I, I don't really want to do that because that's too many input parameters and really all of this is defined on the account record. So what I can do instead is just say, account equals, and then I just search for my account record, where ID equals account ID. Now this line right here is gonna give me the account, or where the ID equals account ID, quite simply that. And now this is only gonna be one record, so I don't need to worry about a for each or any sort of loops. And so that's, that's really all I need to do. And now with this account, it's a collection, I can then replace all these inputs with this collection. So now it's account dot account name, account dot status, account dot phone number, and so on. And wherever you see an input, you can just change it to account. And then last here, we have an info. We're gonna info the CRM argument, or CRM account. And really that's all you really need to do uh, to get this particular function to work in a standalone. Now I can test this by going into an account and let's grab the ID. So let's, I generally just click print and then that will give me the record ID and the URL. So here's the record ID for this account. And then I can execute this and submit. There we go. So we can see it did run successfully because it was modified and that's that. So the benefits here is one, I now have this function decoupled from any workflow rules and it's, it's all just right here. So if I ever need to make any changes to this, I can easily just go into my functions, search for it, find it, make an update here. And then anywhere that this function is deployed, it will make those changes. But also it allows me to more easily debug and test this function using the execute command. Because otherwise, if I was doing this on a workflow rule, I would need to perform that action. I would need to modify a record and edit and submit it. And then I would get the very limited info statement that appears. But with standalone functions, I can just trigger this using a record ID. Or I could also even just put in account ID equals and say that this is a like a test parameter. So I'd, if you wanted to, you could test like this. And generally, if I'm doing that, I'd be like if account ID equals null then do that. So now I could just test this again without putting any parameters in. Be careful doing this. Uh, just make sure that you're always using if else statements to control any test parameters. Uh, but that's uh, one way you can do it. And now you, you can easily trigger this a bunch of different times until you get a working bit of code that, that's uh, performing well. Now, right now, my output of this function is void, which means it's not actually outputting anything. But what I could do is I could change this to a map and then just say return CRM account because CRM account is a map variable. When I return this, then I'll be able to info that return statement wherever I'm triggering this workflow rule. So now that I have this function running, and I'll go ahead and just test it one more time so you can see what a return statement looks like. Very similar, uh, so now it says return value instead of info or uh, log. And let's go ahead and uh, deploy this where we had it originally. So I can go to my workflow rule again. And now on submit, I'm gonna come in here into this. And now I'm just simply going to deploy that function. And so to deploy a function, you can do a few things. You can just say this app dot, and then you can just pull from it here. Or you can also find your functions if you go to refer fields, function, and then you find your application. Oh, I guess it, we're already in it, test app. Uh, test app uh, is the function. And then 
here we go. We can see filter accounts and CRM sync. So you can just pull it in here. And then our input parameter is going to be the ID of this record. There we go. Now, in this case, because I'm passing in the ID of this record, this function will only run if there is an ID assigned to this record, which means this function would not run on create if I'm just doing it on input of a field because the record had not been saved yet and there's no ID assigned to the record until it's saved. So that's something to note is, in this case, it will work because it's on submit, on create or edit, and it's, it's on submit, so when it's submitted, there will be an ID associated to it. But if I was creating an account record and I wanted to trigger a function on input of a, a value, uh, but the record had not been saved yet, then there would be no ID to then trigger it off of. In that case, you would have to specify a different parameter uh, to get that function to work. This is triggering the function, but I could also return the function and say CRM account equals, and then I could info that map now. You don't have to uh, set this as a variable. You could just simply trigger it as a function without assigning a variable to it. But if you wanted to see the info statement, then you would need to assign the variable. You could also trigger an info statement by just putting the info statement directly into the function itself. And then if the info statement's in the function itself, it will also display that on your workflow rule. So now that this function is assigned, I can simply just come into this record. Where was it here? Edit and submit. And you can see there's that function, it ran. And then I can also assign that function to other areas within our app. So maybe on the report itself, I could put in a button here that says CRM sync. And I can simply just copy that same bit of code where this is just the button or this is just the standalone function on a button instead. Now, if I ever wanted to make a change, all I have to do is just make it to that update button or the uh, standalone function and it will propagate across all those different areas. So I could add that button there. I could put the button on the actions, let's say, we wanted to do multiple records at a time. Now we can do a CRM sync on multiple records. So if I come back over here, here we go. We have that button here and I can easily just do a CRM sync. Uh, there's no info statement, but again, if I come into our functions and I go to CRM sync, I could info the CRM account. There we go, now it's appearing. And then also, if I wanted to do this on all of our records, we could just select all and CRM sync, and it would do the same for all of these. I'm not gonna do that because it, I don't need to, um, but yep, you can, you can do that everywhere. So that's for just basic functions. Now, where you can take this to the next step is advanced filtering. So within that function, all we're doing is an API call to the CRM and we're manipula manipulating some data, but I can also do uh, filtering and lookup fields using custom or using standalone functions. So what I've done is inside of our standalone functions, I've, I've created another function here where the return type is a list and if I look at this function, it's very simple, where we are trying to output a list of IDs. And so our account IDs equals any account whose name contains sample. And then I just get the ID and I get all, all of those IDs. So this is going to, if I execute this, there we go, we have a list of maybe 10 IDs in here. There's no input parameters because I've just statically defined it as just contains sample. And then we have our uh, just a list of, of those IDs. Now with those list of IDs, what we can do is we can control reports and filtering. And it doesn't have to be based on ID. You could say you could return account names, statuses. 
you name it, whatever you want to return, uh, really, you could do a list on anything. Uh, we can then use that list to filter records. In this case, I'm just going to do it on IDs because it's most hard, uh, hard code or just statically defined. Uh, we have IDs and I want to show a report of just those IDs. So I can come into our accounts here and let's just duplicate this here. And I'm going to call this sample accounts where I'm selecting records based on the ID of the account equals this app dot. And I'm just going to copy that here. This app dot filter accounts because this app.filter accounts is going to return a list of IDs. If this ID contains or is contained within this list here, then it will appear in this report. So I can go ahead and duplicate this and then let's go ahead and access the account or let's access this report. And there we go. Now we have a filtered report based on a standalone function. All of our accounts are here, but our sample accounts are here. What's nice about this is now I've created a very simple function to do some, uh, to get a list of IDs, but you can really build on this. And let's say you wanted to grab, uh, do an API call to the CRM to get the account owners. And from those account owners, you want to get the ID of the account itself. You, you could really build this out and do some really advanced filtering that you wouldn't be able to do within the native filter criteria. That's one really cool implementation with using standalone functions on reports, uh, but you can also do it in other places, such as lookup fields. Now, if I'm looking at a lookup field, if I go into our account record, oh, sorry, our, let's go into our task record. I want to do that same report, or same filter on the accounts lookup field. So I can add a filter where ID equals this app dot filter accounts done. Now the only records that will appear in this lookup field will be the ones that are from that standalone function. So if I come in here and I go to new task, now we are only seeing sample. Because this is a standalone function, let's say I wanted to change that and I, I want to filter just on accounts whose name contains Oliver. So if I go to filter accounts, name contains Oliver. I only have to change it in this one place. And that's then going to update across all my other places I've deployed it. So if I select our account here, here we go. We have We have our two accounts whose name contains Oliver. And if I go to tasks, there we are. So maybe you could even pull criteria from another function where another function is outputting the criteria that you need to see today. Um, maybe tomorrow you need to see another bit of a criteria. There's a bunch of ways you can control this filtering on lookup fields, reports, uh, and and so on uh, using standalone functions. You can also use standalone functions in other places within this app within Creator. Uh, so we could deploy a standalone function on a schedule. Uh, maybe we want to run a schedule on a certain uh, time a time of day or a certain field. Maybe whenever uh, account is modified, we want to run that function. It's you just throw the function into that uh, into the, the workflow editor and it will run. Same with blueprints. If you were clicking a button in a blueprint and you want to trigger a function, there you go. It's already there for you and you can just go ahead and deploy it. And then again, the biggest uh, benefit of this is instead of having to make those changes through all of those different workflow rules, we can just make the change in the function and it will deploy across all of those different areas. Alrighty, so I hope you found this video helpful and I hope it got your mind thinking about the possibilities with Zoho Creator standalone functions. Now you should have a good idea how to set up your own standalone functions. And if you have any questions or implementations you would like to share, please put those in the comments below or post over in our community, Clubs Zanata. Thanks for watching and have a great day.